Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to run a little project on the CNC router uh, and I'm going to draw it up here in VCAR Pro and I'm going to use a little feature that's in VCAR Pro that uh, I haven't used in a really long time and I don't know why I haven't used it. Uh, it's really what I think is probably an underused feature um, in this software and because I just don't see many other creators use it very often but anyway I'm gonna use it today so let's get started creating a new file uh, this is gonna be a single-sided project uh, I'm gonna use a cedar fence picket so the width of those is about five and a half inches the height I'm gonna make about eight and a half inches and the thickness of those pickets is right around 0.6 it uh, kind of varies. I'll double check it when I get out there, but it's usually either a little over or a little under 0.6. Uh, I'm going to set the Z0 position on the machine bed. I'm going to set the XY datum position uh, right there in the center. And I think that's all I'm going to need to get started here. So let's start that. All right, so there's my blank, and I'm going to start out with some text. And I'm going to use the AR Senna uh, font here. I'm going to put it in the center. Text height is going to be about 5 eighths um, tall. So let's start out and put dogs right there. And let me move this up to, I'm going to put it somewhere about there. I may have to move it around later, but that'll be fine for right now. And then I'm going to put some more text here and you might say well why dogs and well dogs because oops people suck so we're gonna put whoops I better better spell it right Dave come on Okay, there we finally get spilling right. All right, so let's set that somewhere down here. Again, I might have to move that a little bit, but uh, now I'm going to add a 3D model right here. So I'm going to import component 3D model, and I've got this Labrador STL that I got off of Thingiverse. Uh, I'll leave a link down below if anybody uh, wants that. And it's scaled kind of wonky here for the way I want to use it. Uh, comes in way, way too big because there's my material up there, that little bitty rectangle. Uh, so I know that my fence pick is five and a half inches wide, so I'm going to want the X to be about four inches, I think. And that's going to make it the right, about the right size. So let's hit center model. And then we're going to position and import this. Uh, depth below the top I'm gonna want it pretty close right around there and we're gonna end up fixing that again later so let's go ahead and import this and there is our model and you can see we're gonna have to move this up a little bit it's gonna interfere with that text down there let me kind of get it centered here kind of between the text I also want to draw a vector around this model so I'm going to highlight the model and then select that and then you can see it puts a vector around that and then I also want to offset that vector by about an eighth of an inch to the outside so I'm going to select outwards one eighth and then click offset so there we go all right, so now, here we go. I may need to move the dogs up just a little bit right there. And let me come and move this down just a little bit. Here we go. I think that might be all right. And now we'll come over here and we'll start putting some tool paths on this. So I'm going to highlight the dogs and the text down here. And we're going to hit V carve 
and here it pops up with the material setup saying that we have an error here because our model is a little bit it's saying the model is uh, over 0.6 so I'm going to change that and make the model 0.4 inches right there and then that will clear that error out and make everything all hunky dory so let's come up here Again, I'm going to put a V-carve toolpath on the text, so I'm going to use the 3 8 V-bit 60 degree uh, from Cadence Manufacturing. It's one of the uh, Genie bits. I don't know the exact name, but it's the, uh, the uh, 60 degree V-bit. And I'm going to call this first toolpath. I like to number mine so that I know which toolpath to run first. So I'm going to put one dogs. Now, it probably wouldn't really matter the order that I ran this, but I'm going to put it as the first tool path anyway. So we'll check that out, and that looks okay right there. So now let's come over here, and we'll start working on the tool path for this 3D model here. So I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to hit the roughing machine tool path. I'm going to use a quarter inch uh, end mill. It's actually going to be a down cut, uh, a down cut Jenny bit uh, that I'm going to use for this. And I've got selected vector and I'm going to hold the shift button down and highlight this outer vector that I drew. So that's going to be part of our roughing tool path. I want it to do the Z level um, let's see here, and I'm going to rename this as the second tool path to run. So we'll put two dogs, and then we'll calculate that. And now we can check that tool path, and that's just going to clear out some of the, uh, you know, good bulk of the material for the next tool path, and that will be the finishing tool path. Now for this one, I'm going to use a tapered ball nose. It's a 1-8 tapered ball nose um, that has a 1 16th radius tip. And again, I'm going to use the selected vector. So let me come over here and highlight the vector. Okay, we've got the model and the vector highlighted. And we're going to do a raster on this one. And I'm going to call this one Three Dogs, because this will be the third tool path that I run. So we'll calculate that. And actually, after thinking about it here, let's. Uh, There's how that one will look. I want to come back here to this second one because I want to do a 3D raster on that one as well and not the Z level. So let's just go ahead and preview all of them. Okay, so there we are. That's what we've got so far. So now the feature that I was talking about that I want to add that I don't use very often is called the texture feature. Um, in fact, I have to hunt for it because I don't use it enough to even know where it is. But it's this feature right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a quarter inch ball nose for this feature. Uh, but before I select that, I want to come over here to this text. And I'm going to highlight the dogs and I'm going to do an offset of about one eighth outwards. Um, does it really need to? Yeah, that's what I want right there. So I'm going to have to move this up just a little bit now. And then I'm going to come down here to this other text and offset that the same way. And let's see, am I going to need to maybe move this down just, oops, not that much, Dave. 
There we go, just enough. Okay, so I think that's good. Now I'm going to have to recalculate those paths since I moved it a little bit. Okay, we'll double check them again. Oops, I forgot to hit reset preview. There we go. Okay, so that's all looking good. Now I will come back and we're going to add that texture. And again, I'm going to use a quarter inch ball nose. Um, all this looks good. I'm going to set my maximum cut length at three quarter of an inch. And we can play with this and uh, you can play with a lot of these numbers and just keep previewing it and see till you get the look that you want. But I think this is what I want. And this will be the fourth uh, tool path, actually the last tool path that I ran. So I'm going to call it number four dogs. And we'll calculate that. And, well, actually, that did not work because we had this vector highlighted. So here's what I want to do. I need to draw a vector around to make the outside here. So our width was five and a half inches. Our height was eight and a half inches. So I'm going to draw that vector. Well, did I draw it? I guess I didn't. Um, okay. Okay, so there's that vector. Then I also want to come in and offset that by a quarter inch. Oh, only I want to go inwards and create the sharp corners. Okay, let's get rid of that one. There we go. Okay, so now you can see I'm still going to have to move some stuff around here because we're getting getting into the, or actually, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll come in here and we'll highlight all of this and we will scale this back down. Uh, let's scale this whole thing down to four inches. Let's see if that gives me room. Yeah, now I think I can move the dogs back down. Let's see if we can squeeze this in here. There we go. That fits in there. This is going to have to go up just a little bit. There we go. That fits in there. So now I think we're good there. We will have to re, uh, redo those tool paths, and I'll do that here in just a sec. But now let's let's go here for this texture, and I want it to texture inside here and all around this here. But by highlighting those, it should only texture in these areas in here. So let's calculate that. There we go. Now we can, I'll tell you what I need to do. Let's go reset all these things that after I've moved them around here. Okay, now let's take a look and see what we've got. And there we go. And I really like that look. I don't know uh, why people don't use that texture feature more often, but I really, uh, I really like that. So, all right. So we're all done with the program here. Let's uh, save these tool paths to a, a flash drive and head on out to the machine. If you're enjoying this video, please leave me a thumbs up and consider becoming a subscriber. Be sure and hit the little bell to get a notification every time I upload a new video. This first run is using the 60 degree V bit. For the roughing pass, I'm using a downtown Jenny, which is a downcut bit. It's a quarter inch diameter. Next, for the 3D finishing tool path, I'm using a 1 8 inch tapered ball nose bit. It's got a 1 16th radius tip and does a pretty good job getting some detail on a 3D carving. 
And finally, for the texture tool path, I'm using a quarter inch ball nose bit. Have you used the texture tool path in any of your projects? If you have, let me know by leaving me a comment down below. So here's the finished project after a little stain. Uh, the stain's really a little darker than I'd like, but uh, I went ahead and used it because it's what I had on hand. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.